Hello, my name is Tom Holwin and I'm a graduate student in the Astronomy Department at The Ohio State University. I'm also a member of the All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae, or Assassin, and today I'll be discussing our recent discovery of a tidal disruption event, or TDE, which is presented in our paper, Six Months of Multi-Wavelength Follow-Up of the Tidal Disruption Candidate, Assassin 14LI, and Implied TDE Rates from Assassin. The Assassin survey uses four 14-centimeter telescopes in Hawaii and two 14-centimeter telescopes in Chile to scan the visible extragalactic sky roughly once every three days, looking for supernovae and other bright transients. Our transient detection pipeline was triggered on November 22, 2014, by a source located at a position consistent with the center of the galaxy, PGC 043234, at a redshift of 0.0206, corresponding to a distance of about 90 megaparsecs. We announced the discovery of the source through an astronomer's telegram and named the transient Assassin 14 LI. Archival data of the host show no signs of recent star formation, but they do indicate that the host may have a weak AGN. Early follow-up data of the transient show that it has strong emission in the UV and bluer optical wavelengths, as well as broad hydrogen helium emission lines and strong soft X-ray emission. This led us to believe that the transient was a tidal disruption event, and we began a follow-up campaign to characterize this interesting object. A TDE occurs when a star's orbit brings it within the tidal disruption radius of a supermassive black hole, pulling the star apart. The disrupted material is then either ejected or accreted onto the black hole, resulting in a long-lasting luminous flare. Observationally, TDEs are characterized by a strong blue continuum and broad hydrogen or helium emission lines in their spectra. We requested and received swift space telescope observations in the optical, UV, and X-ray. We supplemented these with photometric and spectroscopic observations from a number of ground telescopes. These observations span roughly six months after the detection of the transient. In the light curve of the transient shown here, data in different filters are shown in different colors, with colored stars indicating the host galaxy magnitudes in the same filters. The light curve shows that the transient was much brighter in the UV and bluer optical wavelengths than the host, and that the extra UV emission was long-lasting, similar to what is seen in other TDE candidates. Follow-up spectra corroborate this picture, showing a strong blue continuum that grows weaker over time, and broad emission features, particularly H-alpha, H-beta, and the helium-2-4868 angstrom line, which remain strong even in the most recent epoch, and are not present in the host galaxy spectrum, shown in black. The luminosities of the emission lines indicate that the emission is generally consistent with what would be expected from recombination. Comparison with spectra of Assassin 14 AE, the first TDE candidate discovered by Assassin, shows that Assassin 14 LI strongly resembles Assassin 14 AE at similar epochs after discovery. While the emission lines differ somewhat, the strong blue continuum and broad H alpha emission are obvious in both objects. We modeled the object's luminosity and temperature evolution by fitting black body curves to the observed SED. These fits were made with a strong temperature prior, as the peak of the emission seems to be bluer than our bluest UV filter. But we obtained best fits with a temperature of roughly 40,000 Kelvin. The luminosity of the object, shown here, drops steadily during the period of observations at a rate that is best fit by an exponential decline. The X-ray luminosity, shown as triangles, does not follow the same decline rate perhaps indicating that the X-ray emission is being seen from a different region of the source than the optical and UV emission. Integrating the luminosity gives a total energy of 3.8 times 10 to the 50 ergs released by Assassin 14LI. We also performed TDE rate calculations using the two Assassin TDE discoveries from 2014 and randomly selected SDSS galaxies. We estimate our detection efficiency by modeling the peak of the light curve and the decay rate to simulate expected TDE emission. We then use this detection efficiency and the two detections to calculate an average rate of 7.6 times 10 to the negative 5 TDEs per year per galaxy. This rate is significantly higher than what was recently found by Van Velzen and Farrar using SDSS and PanSTARS TDE discoveries, though it is consistent within uncertainties. But it is more in line with theoretical predictions. We also find that the relative rate of TDEs versus Type 1A supernovae discovered by Assassin is much higher than that for other surveys. Assassin discovers roughly one TDE for every 70 Type 1A supernovae, 
while other surveys find one TDE for every few hundred to a thousand type 1a supernovae. As we discuss in the paper, this may imply that Assassin's sample is more complete and thus our higher TDE rate may be due to this completeness. At redshift 0 0.0206, Assassin 14LI is the lowest redshift TDE candidate ever discovered at optical wavelengths. It is also one of the only TDE candidates to show both X-ray and UV and optical emission. With two more cameras coming online in Chile in July of 2014, Assassin will continue to be an invaluable resource for studying these and other rare bright transients in the future. For more information about this work, please see our paper which is posted on the archive. Thanks for watching.